Three things before I start, Mr. Speaker. First of all, my congratulations to David Tour for winning his fight last night. Close relation of my mate uh, Sam over here, and a relation of mine as well, because he's from up north. Long way up north, but from up north. And, but just thirdly, I'd also like to uh, record my deep and abiding criticism of my colleague, the scoundrel Teodoro Flavel, for abandoning the House last night, abandoning, abandoning his responsibilities to the Māori Party so he could go and watch the fight. And finally, however, to thank him very much for leaving me this most exciting speech on the dairy industry restructuring raw milk pricing methods bill. <clears throat> Mr Speaker, this bill to allow milk to be allocated through an auction process sounds technical, but it also allows us to acknowledge the opportunity for Māori in the primary sector. Māori dairy farmers own an estimated 100 million shares in Fonterra, with some of the major players in the sector being large Māori and corporations directly accountable to their people. And so Māori school ac acquisition research and innovation within the sector will be essential to gaining added value from existing Māori assets and interests in agriculture, horticulture, forestry and aquaculture. I understand, Mr Speaker, that this bill is basically an exercise in restructuring contracts via an auction, putting the onus on buyers to set the new price range for contracts and helping all players get a snapshot of potential new prices set by the market itself, which will help in how the market sees and values itself and help determine consumer patterns, and that the stated intentions of the bill are to achieve a decent price for regulated raw milk as soon as possible, to ensure excess demand for regulated raw milk is managed efficiently, and to remove uncertainty regarding the price of regulated raw milk. But it seems, Mr Speaker, that even with one clear purpose, there are still very strong and differing responses from across the sector. At one end, we have Parinihi Ki Waitotara, who support the principle of the bill. Mind you, Parinihi is a Fonterra supplier and has been subsidising open country, sin late and others to date for milk they take under the 2001 Dairy Industry Restructuring Act. At the other end, there's Green Valley Dairies, who oppose it because they think the proposed auction system will simply create ambiguity in an already volatile raw milk market. And Tatua Co-op Dairy Company said the bill should be abandoned or at least delayed until there is greater clarity about the likely outcomes. And in the middle we have Open Country Dairy Company Limited who don't think the bill will deliver on the expectations of the 2001 Act but will comply with the new law because regulated milk is only a small part of the operation. Mr Speaker, on another level, I think it's also worthy to note that one of the interesting features of the 2009 economic situation was that Māori dairy farmers thought that they would be less likely to be affected by the forecast drop in milk payouts than non-Māori farmers. And I recall Lino Tirikatane of Ngāti Hine and CEO for the Federation of Māori Authorities saying that it was because Māori farmers' gearing and debt ratios were more conservative than non-Māori, 10 to 15 per cent of the value of the asset for Māori as opposed to 60 to 70 per cent for non-Māori something my colleague, the scoundrel Theodore Flavel, spoke about last week in the debate around securities trustees. So instead of struggling to service debt, Māori farmers were able to focus on feed strategies to stay afloat during the tough times. Clearly, Mr Speaker, being able to be self-sufficient and relatively undamaged by debt burden means that Māori farmers are less likely to be forced into mortgagee sales. A very strong feature of the Māori dairying sector that the whole New Zealand dairy sector would do well to emulate. Finally, Mr Speaker, I'd like to step outside the milking shed for a minute to look at the broader issue of the affordability of food and dairy products to ordinary Kiwis. Because although the CPI suggests essential food prices will fluctuate from time to time, the trend is for ever-increasing prices, regardless of auctions that may affect dairy farmers and their incomes. Statistics New Zealand say food prices went up 2.1% in January alone, with higher prices for grocery, food, fruit, vegetables, meat, poultry and fish. An ideal opportunity, therefore, for, to promote my colleague Lau Hikata in his bill, calling for healthy food to be exempt from GST, because in fact it seems that it's poor people who are actually in danger of being priced out of the market. 
The research confirms the high rates of child poverty, poor living conditions and health status of children in low income families. And we note that during the last three years, food prices have gone up more than 20%. Indeed, increases for the staples of a nutritious diet, such as fruit, vegetables and milk, have been particularly high, while real incomes have risen only very slightly. It is because of these massive changes, Mr Speaker, that the Māori Party is supporting Rahui Kartini's call for GST to be removed from healthy foods to make them more affordable. So, while we will be supporting this bill, we leave a challenge for this House. Auction milk prices if you must, but do not auction the well-being of New Zealanders by failing to recognise the very real impact of our economic decisions on those most vulnerable in our society. Tēnā koe.